Hello everyone, welcome back to Sula's Big Adventures. This episode is part of my series on dark sky sights, and this one's about stargazing at Capitol Reef National Park in the state of Utah in the United States. Capitol Reef is an international dark sky park, receiving this designation in 2015. Capitol Reef first became a national monument in 1937, and in 1971 it became a national park. It encompasses nearly 242,000 acres or 980 square kilometers. The park is primarily known for its outstanding geological features, most notably the Water Pocket Fold, a monocline extending almost 100 miles, which was created by the Earth's crust being uplifted on one side by deposition, erosion, and uplift. The monocline is also the reason for the park's name, since people thought the monocline resembled a reef. And the first part of the name comes from a prominent rock formation in the park that resembles the United States Capitol Dome. It's a gorgeous park with many beautiful trails, a historic district called Fruito, which was settled by Mormons in the 1800s. They planted fruit trees there and they're still there today and they left other buildings and artifacts. And there's a large, easily accessed petroglyph panel and other petroglyphs and pictographs throughout the park. These were left by the Indians who first lived there from 300 to 1300 AD. And they were the ancestors of modern day Hopi, Zuni, and Paiute Indians. There's an outstanding, beautiful scenic drive through a narrow canyon with towering cliffs. And the park is a great place to stargaze. There's one campground, the Fruita campground, that's not a good place to stargaze because it's covered by trees, but it's very conveniently located near the visitor center, which has very appropriate lighting. There are many places in the park, though, where you can set up your telescope and stargaze under dark skies. I first visited Capitol Reef National Park in 1995 when no one had heard of it. And back then I only had my 90 millimeter Maxutov Cassegrain telescope, but I would say the skies were much darker back then. If you don't want to camp at Fruita Campground, there are several lodges that have been built over the years that are right outside of the park entrance. But some of them are not really suitable for stargazing. I would recommend you not stay at the Capitol Reef Lodge or resort, which has a lot of unnecessary lights, including Christmas lights that are strung up along every one of the many buildings comprising this lodge. Also, stay away from the Noor Hotel, also horribly lit up and creating massive light pollution for miles. The cute little town of Torrey is just eight miles away from the park entrance. And the town is also an international dark sky site, and they've tried very hard to reduce light pollution there. I would recommend staying at one of the nicely and appropriately lit lodges there, such as Red Sands Lodge or the Skyview Lodge. Just past Torrey is the town of Big Nell, which is not a dark sky site, and that's evidenced by the many overly lit hotels, such as the one we unfortunately selected to stay in, the Aquarius Inn. The room was very nice and it had nice amenities, but it had an unfortunate 24-hour light on the outside of the swimming pool. I have no idea why it was there or what its purpose served other than to prevent you from seeing a single star from the parking lot. I don't recommend the Aquarius Inn either. The only benefit of staying at the Aquarius Inn is that it's just a few miles away from the Sand Creek Trailhead in Fish Lake National Forest, which has a large parking lot with a 360 degree view of the sky unobstructed in any direction. I set up my telescope there to watch the Orion and Meteor Shower, and it was a great place to see the entire sky. You can't camp there though, and the other problem was that Orion, the radiant for this meteor shower, rose in the east, and that was the same direction as the horribly lit Capitol Reef Resort. And do not under any circumstances try to stargaze at the Goosenecks Panorama Point parking area. It's open and a nice place to see the sunset, but unfortunately many people go there after dark, I guess to see the Milky Way, but unfortunately they are people who are not educated about dark sky etiquette. So many cars endlessly pull in and pull out of the parking lot, and for reasons I cannot understand, they point flashlights toward the sky. 
If there's only one thing you take away from my videos, I hope that it is that you must have a red headlamp or red flashlight if you want to see anything in the night sky, whether it's the Milky Way, a meteor shower, or just to see a lot more stars than you will ever see from your home. Pointing a white light in any direction, particularly at the sky, will only ruin the experience for you and for those around you. I set up my telescope there, but was repeatedly blinded by cars coming in and going out until 10 p.m. when it finally died down. Hello everyone, today I'm at Capitol Reef National Park in Utah. I drove for hours to get here because the weather was so bad in Montana. Okay, I've had it with this bad weather in Montana. I'm out of here. I'm heading to Utah. I put my 10-inch Dobsonian in here and a four and a half inch refractor with a go-to mount. I have three tripods for the meteor shower. The weather looks great down there. There's just barely any room to sit, but we're going. The weather was spectacular today. I think it was a high of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not very cold right now, and I thought that the Goosenecks Panorama Point Row would be a good place to look at the comets and the Milky Way and stars and nebulae and galaxies. Well, no, do not ever, ever try to stargaze here. This is a terrible place. Car after car after car came in and out, in and out, shining their headlights in my eyes. They all had lights and I don't know what they were doing up there. They couldn't possibly have seen the Milky Way with all the lights they had. And so it's not a good place. Do not try Gooseneck Panorama Point Road. Terrible place to try to stargaze. But I, I think there are some good places here, just not here. And I mean, I drove for hours to get here because the weather was so bad in Montana. And I brought the works. I brought my 10-inch Dobsonian. I brought my four and a half inch refractor and my Los Mandy go-to mount to look at the two comets. Comet A6 Lemon is so bright right now, I easily picked it out with binoculars. I also saw R2 Swan. It does not have a tail. <laughs> to me, it doesn't look like a comet. It still looks like a globular cluster, even in this 10 inch Dobsonian. I took a bunch of pictures, but a lot of them were ruined by headlights. But Hopefully tomorrow will be better. I'm not coming here. I'll find another dirt road that's better. No people and no headlights. And I will also see the Orion and Meteor Shower. So I'll see you tomorrow. I would recommend that you take the scenic drive and find a pullout on that road or at the parking area for Capitol Gorge or on the Grand Wash Road, which leads to the Grand Wash Trailhead and the trail to Cassidy Arch or try the parking lot for Cohab Canyon a trail that also would be good. Outside of the park, there's the Fish Lake National Forest Sand Creek Trailhead that I mentioned. And also there's um, Bees Road where many campers go to camp for free. And it's just a few miles outside of the Capitol Reef entrance. You can just pull out into a spot there and get as far away from Highway 24 as possible and stargaze. There's also the water pocket fold area, much less frequented and has many more places to set up your telescope. And I believe it's darker on that side of the park, but a bit of a drive to get to it. I went to Capitol Reef recently because the park is in the desert and it has much better weather than my house in Southwest Montana, even though it was not much darker in Capitol Reef than my driveway. I took an SQM at a couple of locations in the park, but I never got a reading better than 21.44, whereas I can usually get a reading of about 21.3 from my driveway. The park is around 6,000 feet or so, um, and so is my driveway, but Capitol Reef is in the desert, so it's ideal for stargazing. To get there, you can fly to the Salt Lake City Airport and drive for three hours down Interstate 15 and then take Highway 50 to Scipio. I drove there from my driveway in Montana. It was a long, long drive, but driving allowed me to take my 10-inch Dobsonian and my 115-millimeter refractor and a go-to mount. I went in October, and that's when the weather's not so hot, and July can swell to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And in December and November, it gets really cold and it even receives snow. 
But the advantage of going in October, despite the crowds, is that the cottonwood trees that line the Fremont River turn their gorgeous golden hue. It makes for some beautiful photo opportunities. Though it's past Milky Way core season by October, you can still get some great nightscape photos there. I prefer going in June when the temperatures are sweltering, but when you can get some good Milky Way art shots and there aren't as many people and you can find more secluded places to stargaze. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off. <laughs>